My name is Bonnie Davis, and these are my records. I reckon you could also call them my memoirs, since if you get to read this, although I wouldn't consider myself dead, I will have passed away, in a sense. Should you have, perchance, happened across my hopefully lifeless body somewhere in these godforsaken halls, then I shall be glad that nothing worse has become of my mortal shell. Should it not have been all that lifeless, even though I'd wonder what still drives it, I would hope that you have gotten away unharmed, and I'd be very sorry for the inconvenience my soulless husk might have caused you. Should you, however, have wandered into this accursed temple without finding my remains, I would advise you to watch your back. And should you find yourself reading these pages, still surrounded by the myriad of books and scrolls within this shallow grave some might call a library, I would highly advise you to take with you whatever you desire and leave as long as you still can. In fact, I would tell you not to touch anything, but since you are reading these words, I'm afraid it's already too late. So, if you insist, I will tell you my story. It had been an arduous journey, but after days of hiking and searching, we had finally found the ruins. Even though the temple had sunken into the ground, we were able to unblock the entrance by means of some dynamite and a bit of digging. What we unearthed was a straight corridor that seemed largely untouched, apart from roots pushing in through the crude stone walls. Saying that I was excited is an understatement. I could barely contain myself. So, I alone went inside the darkness as my team of locals was hesitant due to their superstitions. I never paid much attention to that sort of thing at the time. After only a few paces, I stood before a heavy wooden door. I tried the handle, and even after all these years, it swung open almost by itself, inviting me in. Beyond lay a room lined with bookshelves, overflowing to such an extent that books were just stacked on the floor up to head height. It was only an ante room, it seemed, as there was another archway on the opposite side, leading to another room, the contents of which I could not make out in the dim light of my lantern. Upon entering the ante room, I immediately noticed the lectern, which featured quite prominently in the room, and made me suspect that this must have been a place of learning and teaching once. Although, I have been wondering about the single armchair with its velvet cushions, sitting lonely in the golden middle of the room. It looked very out of place, and not nearly as ancient as the rest of the site. I assumed someone must have brought it in later, to sit and read more comfortably. I carefully explored the room, and began inspecting the bookshelves a bit more closely. I'm not a real archaeologist, not a studied one anyway, so I couldn't exactly date those books and scrolls, but even as a layman I could easily tell that most of them were very old. Some even featured pages made of parchment, and I found several scrolls that I would presume are some sort of papyrus. In my excitement to have come across such a treasure of knowledge, I just carefully picked up a random book and tried opening it. Against all odds, the moldy damp of this place had not been getting to the pages over the years, and they didn't stick to each other at all. To my surprise, I could even read the words. So I did. At first only curious about the topic, I was enthralled instantly, and soon forgot the time. I still haven't gone further than the anteroom, but I've been coming down here to read every day for over a week now. What I found in these books is most peculiar and frankly a bit unnerving, hence why I decided to record my findings. I am also hoping to counteract the creeping loss of sanity by sharing my thoughts with, well, an empty page for now, but it feels like sharing nonetheless. I'm rambling, please forgive me, I shall try and keep this as concise and factual as possible. From the books I've read so far, I can infer two things. For one, they all contain, without fail, stories of people suffering most tragic fates and coming to bitter ends, often by means of the supernatural or the occult, ghosts, monsters, and even wrathful godlike entities. No happy endings, none of the protagonists ever survives. I can't say that I'm thrilled about such a library, as I was rather hoping to find some traces of history, and yet I can't seem to stop reading them. All of them are so well written, carefully crafted masterpieces evoking a feeling of anxiety and dread that not even the hand of a Bram Stoker could have produced. The words are flowing into my eyes, like a fine wine down my throat, and they are deliciously frightening. Forgive this whimsical metaphor, but it suits my second finding, a thing which frightened me quite a bit more than any story ever could. I was going to copy one of the stories to show to my husband when I returned home, so I laid out my writing utensils on the lectern and opened up a book I had read earlier. To my surprise, the pages were completely and utterly empty. At first, I thought I had opened the wrong book, 
but upon checking the cover again, I was sure that it was the one I had read earlier this week. This confused me. Normally I'm a fairly level-headed person and not at all superstitious, let alone hallucinating words or the disappearance thereof, whichever is the case. I stood there in disbelief for a while, until I finally decided that I must be dreaming and tried pinching myself, amongst other things. To my shame, I even tried hitting my head against the wall rather forcefully, and I must conclude that the pain is very real and I am very much awake, and the words are still missing from the pages. In hindsight, it was a foolish attempt, since I've never been one to dabble in fantasies and would always much rather find out about real historical events. Ergo, even though I would consider myself fairly eloquent, I have no experience in writing fiction. Surely my mind couldn't have been capable of producing so many stories of such horrifying yet amazing quality. I was scared but also curious to find out what magic trick was behind all this, so I grabbed a random book from the shelves. As expected, it was another one that contained several short stories, so I picked the shortest one I could find and read it very carefully, inspecting the letters very closely. Then I closed the book and opened it up again. I couldn't believe my own eyes. The ink was gone. As if I had literally been drinking it all in. It was impossible. A feeling of burning dread rose in my chest. Only for a moment I lost my composure and flung the cursed book across the room as if that would save me, immediately realizing that I am surrounded by books of the same kind anyway. I laughed at my foolish behavior, a laugh that even unsettled myself. Had my dear husband seen me in this condition, I'm sure he would have declared me hysterical and fed me laudanum. I have some on me, and I considered it for a moment, but I find it makes you feel dizzy, and I felt that way already at that second. Afraid that I might faint from it, I put it away again, hands shaking as I fumbled with the straps of my bag. Distraught, I let myself fall into the old armchair, which immediately exploded into a cloud of dust, not exactly making it easier to focus on my breathing and calm down. I have calmed down a bit since. I am still sitting in the chair, though, writing these words. I am not so naive to hope anyone will believe me, so no one except for my dear husband will get to read this. I just felt the urgent need to share my experience right now. I'm not sure what this all means. However, I now understand the superstitions of the locals, and I will leave this place for good. It appears I'm locked in. I thought it must have been the wind closing the massive old wooden door, but now it won't budge anymore. Someone must have blocked it from the outside. That certainly wasn't the wind, and I would have noticed any landslides. I don't want to blame my own team. Claiming that they, of all people, these relative strangers, would want to see me dead wouldn't do much for my case of not being hysterical, would it? But no one is reacting to my shouting and banging on the door either. I have to keep calm and try to find another exit. It's currently 7 in the morning as I am writing this. All I found yesterday evening was at least 10 dozen other rooms with vaulted ceilings not unlike the anteroom, but all full of shelves and stacks of books and all arranged slightly differently, almost in a maze-like fashion. It's a labyrinth down here. A library rinth. I'd feel smart about the neologism if I wasn't feeling so dumb already for getting lost in it. I tried mapping it out as I went. I'm not stupid. It just ended up not making any sense. I guess I must have gotten confused at some point. Unless... After wandering around for four hours, I had been checking my pocket watch constantly, I found my way back to the anteroom exhausted and crying from fear. Never before have I experienced such a feeling of impending doom, such certainty that this is how I die, and I didn't know what to do with that feeling. I still don't. The only idea I had was trying to go to sleep, praying that someone would come to check on me tomorrow. But with thoughts and pulls racing, the only way of getting some sleep I saw was downing the whole vial of laudanum to calm my nerves. I then started digging through my backpack for a blanket and soon got very lightheaded. I passed out in the dusty old armchair shortly after. I didn't sleep well, of course. All the horrifying stories I had been reading in these books were bringing me nightmares since day one, and the terror of being trapped and left for dead made them double. I woke up in a cold sweat, still tired and with my back aching from the chair. There was a disgusting smell coming from the next room and an equally nasty taste in my mouth. I must have gone there to throw up though I can't remember that at all. In fact, upon looking in, I can't even remember the adjacent room itself. It looks... different. Could someone have changed it while I was asleep? Could I have changed it? No way. And I don't even want to consider the option of it changing itself. I feel miserable. 
I'll just read another book until I feel better. It's not like my situation could get any worse. It appears the wind-up mechanism of my pocket watch broke. I'm holding the pin in my hand right now, which is not supposed to happen, I'm sure. Its hands came to rest almost exactly at 4 o'clock, and without it there's really no way of telling the time down here. All I know is that I'm burning through my lantern oil at an alarming rate, and the thought of sitting in complete darkness in these cursed ruins only scares me more. Without light, I won't be able to do anything down here, other than perish, that is. If all else fails, I will have to burn these books for light and warmth. But the thought alone upsets me. I'd rather die than destroy such a treasure, and God knows what will happen when you burn a cursed book. Perhaps evil spirits will come out? I'd rather not find out. I can feel my breath getting heavier under the crushing weight of existential dread every now and then, and without laudanum, the only thing calming my nerves, ironically, is reading. These stories are so exceptionally well written, reading them almost feels like a real experience, and it certainly helps escape my equally frightening reality. But I can't waste my time like that right now. I have to find a way out before I run out of oil and provisions. Come to think of it, I haven't eaten anything today, so maybe I'll gobble something down first. On the other hand, I don't feel hungry or thirsty, so maybe I should keep it for when I really need it? As much as I hate it when Jonathan does it, I wish I just had someone tell me what to do right now. I just tried opening the door by force, but even using a candelabra I found for leverage, it won't give way. I'm just too weak. Had I not skipped the exercising of the legs so often, maybe I'd be able to just kick it in. I wonder if the reason my beloved would nag me about it so often was because he foresaw such a situation. Then again, I'm sure not even his strong legs could defeat this bulwark of a door, I don't think. I will try looking around again, as long as I still have light. I just came back from walking around, presumably all night, but there's no way of knowing for certain anymore, other than that I'm very tired. Again, nothing looked familiar to me on the way back, other than this very room. I am now convinced that the rooms are moving. I am not mad. I can prove it, because the vomit is gone. In fact, I found that same room, including the smelly stain, in a completely different location. And after all, why not? If the letters can vanish from the pages and doors can close themselves, why wouldn't the rooms be moving as well? So unless I'm hallucinating all of it. And you know what? If I die down here anyway, I might as well conduct an experiment. I'll leave my broken watch on the floor of the adjacent room and see what happens. The time has come. I'm out of oil. I'm currently using the candelabra. Soon I'll be without light and doomed to wander around in the dark until I starve. There is a chandelier on the ceiling. Another thing that seems retrofitted, but there is no contraption for lowering it, at least not in this room. I tried to reach it using a ladder meant for bookshelves, but I couldn't lean it against anything except the chair, which wasn't a stable enough construction. So I spent quite a lot of time building a high enough staircase out of books. In the end, I managed to reach the chandelier and pick off the candles. Of course, I was clumsy enough to fall off on my way down, so now I'm limping. Not that it matters, there's no sense in walking around anyway no escape. Well, at least I can say I've tried, and bought myself a couple hours of time. Speaking of time, I've been observing the broken watch very closely in the meantime, and it hasn't moved yet. I'm a little disappointed by that. Maybe I can't be looking. Why do I even want something spooky to happen? I almost don't dare write this, for you will declare me completely out of my mind, but I read another book and I think it healed me. The pain in my leg is gone. I'm relatively sure it was the act of reading it that made it subside. Now that I think about it, when I kept reading after my night in the armchair, I both got rid of my back pain and recovered from the laudanum-induced nausea rather quickly. Even the foul taste in my mouth had vanished. I also don't feel hungry or thirsty anymore, even after days of living down here, if you can call it that. So far, it even seems like I don't need any more sleep. Were I not trapped in a cursed labyrinth, I'd think this was amazing. Well, maybe I'd still realize that I'm developing an unhealthy obsession with reading these books. But they are giving so much back. Dear diary, that's what this is at this point, isn't it? I'm almost out of candles. I will venture into the labyrinth once more and try to find... something. An exit. More candles. Just anything. Even though I don't seem to need any sleep anymore at all, 
I feel so very tired. I'm back. I picked the candles off of every candelabra I saw, and I found an oil lamp. This will get me through a couple more hours, maybe days, but that's it. After that, all I can do is sit in the dark and wait for death. Or for someone to rescue me, of course, but it's... It's been days. At least that's what my inner clock tells me. The pocket watch is gone, by the way. The rooms are moving, I'm sure of that now. I feel vindicated and anxious at the same time. An exceptional mix of emotions I have neither experienced up until this point, nor in retrospect ever missed. Also, I'm afraid this discovery won't help me in any way. None of the rooms features an exit, it seems, and they seem to move in such a manner that they always lead you back to this place. I can feel the dread rising again, like a shadow looming over me. I will read some more to distract myself. Dear Diary, I have read about eight whole books, maybe nine. The candles have all burned down, but the lamp I found doesn't seem to run out of oil ever. I'm not even questioning it at this point. I thought about taking some of its oil and putting it in my own lantern, but I don't want to push my luck, if you can call it that. So what do I do now? I guess I'll just keep reading to stay alive until someone finds me. Surely my dear husband will come looking for me when he realizes I'm not coming back from my journey. But if not... Jonathan, if you're reading this, I did not leave you. I did not run away. And please believe me that I have always loved you, and I always will. If I never see you again, I hope I'll see you in the afterlife. If I ever get there, that is. Since this place is starting to feel an awful lot like limbo. Dear Diary, I don't even want to entertain the thought of Jonathan abandoning me, yet I have given up on the childish hope of him coming to save me. I'm not even sure he'd be able to find me, so I've been just reading. I mean, what else is there to do? I don't exactly know how long it's been since my last entry, but I've started measuring time in pages, and it's been 51,000 and a stone tablet. Apparently, one can live off of these things forever, but at a cost, and I don't mean being trapped here. I can barely distinguish between what has once been my own reality and what I only read in one of these cursed books anymore. Even the memory of Jonathan is fading. I want to feel sad, I want to miss him, I really do. But I can't. Not because he didn't come, but just because I don't feel anything. No basic human needs, no emotions, no missing my husband. The thought alone would have sent me into a fit of despair were I still able to feel such an emotion. I don't think anything new is going to happen, so I will stop writing in this diary. This is my last entry. I am well aware of the irony that I have become yet another one of these tragic stories so neatly tucked away in these godforsaken halls. Yet I feel indifferent about it and I can't even make a comment. In a way, even my writing capabilities are starting to elude me. I guess I'll just go back to reading until I die. Or until forever. Goodbye, dear reader, and goodbye world. I was mistaken. Immediately after writing my last entry, I turned back the pages to read through my own story again. And wouldn't you know it, the letters disappeared. Even in my numb state, this sent me into a fit of rage. This is my book, I screamed. I won't allow it. And then the letters came back, slowly reappearing and rearranging themselves. I don't know what is happening to me, what this place is doing to me, but I can now change my book at will. To be completely honest with you, I never wrote what you're reading right now. It makes me hope that, when I'm dead and gone, I can somehow still communicate with Jonathan. If someone finds me, my book, I mean, I could just instruct them to bring me to him. I will keep writing to deepen my connection with the book. I'll just write my own story about my life, or what I can recall from it between all these grisly stories. Dear reader, I've been writing down every little detail of my life I remembered. It was quite the opposite of reading these stories. I could feel the life draining from my body and pouring into every word. I can barely distinguish skin from parchment anymore. I wonder if that's what happened to all these protagonists of all these stories. I wonder who wrote their lives away. I wonder where the scribe is now and whether it was his old armchair that my dying body is now resting in. I wonder so many things. 
One thing, though, I do not want to know. What will become of my lifeless husk once I have left it behind? I shall put a warning on my first page in case it will start to move like everything else in this accursed place. But I will not attempt to stop all the dark stories I have crammed into it from taking over. They can have it. After all, they have kept it alive for so long. And I still don't know if I have freed them from their parchment prison or consumed them because of my own reckless behavior.